oftentimes when you look at some traditional, say, a craftsman style piece of furniture, uh, you'll see drawbar pins, but you'll see a square peg in a square hole. I've cut some square holes here, and this is a, a, a square peg that I'm going to use to draw up my joint in the, the traditional way. So, but what I want to show you is how we get to this point, how we make this piece of equipment that's going to pull this together and still retain all the integrity of the drawbar pin in its original intent where it bends inside the joint, the holes are staggered and it pulls the two together. So I've got these three done, they're already bored. I've got one more to do. So I put this inside the hole here. Check my joints, the joints are perfect. That looks great. Take it apart. I'm gonna bore one hole through here all the way through the 3 8 hole always making sure because you can't rely on the drawbar pin to pull that joint together so you want to make sure you've checked it try and drill as square as you can but it's not essential as i break through this first wall here i go i can feel it easing off i go more gently so i don't burst out the inside And I'm, I'm going to go on this one until I just feel the pin, the tip coming through. That's the snail. So I'm really doing this the same way you would do a normal draw bore pin. And, uh, or a draw bore mortise and tenon joint, really. Clean out the inside, make sure there's no debris inside so that your joint seats fully. Like this, I'm going to turn this this way. This goes in here, so I've got this mark number three here and I marked it inside the hole so I know that this is the way this goes inside. This goes right in the set. Let me do this so you can see on top of the bench a little bit. I just take this now, make sure your joint is good and tight or as tight as you can get it. Drop this in here and use the point of the bit to get the exact center on the hole. So there you can see that. And then we're gonna stagger that hole. We're going to go from here, we're going to move towards the shoulder, 116. So there is my hole. That's where I'm going to bore the hole. So it's slightly off center. And that's what the, that's what the uh, dynamic is that pulls the joint together. Just till you get the snail through here. Nice tight shoulder line, everything's been checked. There it is. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna take the knife, just a very sharp knife. What, what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use the rim of the of the, um, the hole that we bored as a guide for the width of this square hole here. So we do the cross grain cut here, like this. And the same onto this rim of the hole here, like that. I'm, go I'm going to set my sliding uh, combination square to the rim of the hole on the top edge there. So this goes here. And I just use the end of my square. That means that I've got the, this exactly square just for the opposite side of the hole, like this. Try and try to get it as close to the rim as you can. One, two, so I've got these very fine knife holes, barely, you can barely see them here, can you? 
see, so I've got this square inside on the outside of the rim. Three eighths chisel, which I already checked the size of, so it's the same size. And I go into that knife wall, I'm going directly into the knife wall, like this, so I'm in the knife wall, watching for the width to make sure this lines up with the edge of the rim. And at an angle like this, first of all, I'm just gonna tap like that. And then I go right on the inside rim and chop perpendicular. And now I'm all ready to the depth that I want for that square end of the pin. So I'm ready, so that's my depth. I go to the opposite side guided by the knife wall. So I'm in there slightly at an angle, tap and then square up my chisel right on the inside wall, chop down. Now I'm using the bevel of my, my, my chisel here as a guide for my depth, which I made these to that depth. Can you see that? So I've made those match that depth. That's how I've got that. So here now, right on the rim again. This time, because I'm going along the grain and with the grain, I don't have to angle my chisel. I just go straight down with a perpendicular cut. So I just clean up the corners like this. Twist my chisel inside just to clean out the corners. And I don't know, right inside here, can we? You can just see the inside circumference of the 3 8 hole. I need to show you how to make the square pegs. This is how I make mine. It has a little dome on the top, a four-sided dome. So for that, I just use a, a flat file and I file the corner like this and I go down to whatever depth I want to, whatever size I want for this dome. So I'm going down about a quarter of an inch on this face. Then I'll lift up with each stroke now towards the center, keeping the, sile, this, the file flat. Then I turn around, go to an adjacent face, either one, and I use this line from here to give me the guideline for this one. So this goes Exactly the same. Try and keep that even. Onto the top and then a continuous one just to clean up the strokes. Flip and do the same again. It's very effective. And really about the fastest, safety, safest method I know of for making these. That's that bit. Now this is going to be my overall length. I want enough to cut off about three eighths of an inch past the thickness of the piece of wood it's going through. So I'm going to cut this off here. Now that I've done that, normally I would do two mushroomed ends. That's what I would normally do just to have the extra length to put it in the vise. What I do now is I overhang the vise. This is a little fine saw. And this distance that I'm going to get here is the bevel from the bevel of my chisel that I'm going to chop the mortise hole for the square peg to go into. That gives me the distance from the edge. And I go square across the two. Then I just angle my saw down like this, come up and down onto this face here on the corner and I'm just forming a shoulder line around here. Flip it, continue onto the adjacent vein again here, just short staggered cuts like this. This is giving me a break line and you'll see why in a minute, I hope. So there we are, we've got that. Now I'm looking at the grain, trying to read the grain just above the vise like this. And then with a small chisel, I'm going to come along here and I'm going to bevel into this corner here. Take it out. 
like this. This is giving me, this is taking off the bulk of the waste. Same on this corner here. So I've got some pretty nice straight grained oak, it looks like here. So I can actually form this end that's going up into the recess. So the same on this side now. And then we just pair in the corners, get rid of the hard corners. Same on this edge. So I read the grain, nice and straight grain. So I did try and pick straight grain because I knew I had to do this. Take the other end and now work on this here towards the outer edge to take off the corners. I'm going to pair this a little bit, get this as a start for when it goes into the metal hole. You'll see in a minute. Off with the corners again. There we go. That's got that start now. So I'm going to take the metal plate. I've just drilled this as a platform to allow it to pass through this hard metal. Uh, hole in here this to drive my peg through so try and make it square if it wants to move over move it back to square and then tap here got the square peg and goes into the um, the hole so I'm ready now to put this joint together so I know I've got this staggered effect inside the joint so I'm going to glue this in place here so again I'm gluing again Don't need very much glue. That's it. I'm going to slot this in here and then so I'm nicely seated inside here. I can see the hole is offset slightly. I don't need to glue this, but I do need to put that leading edge on the inside here. I'm going to just take it off the top edge here. I don't have to do it all the way around because that's the only edge. I might just take off a little bit of the corners here because the hole is offset. So as long as I have, now I have this square section to guide because that really has to line up with the hole as I drive the ball pin into that hole. So I'm going over the, the vise here and I keep this as square as I can as it goes in to the hole here. So I'm lining it up. If need be, I'll just take a pair of pliers on here just to twist it, tweak it a little bit, make sure it's lining up and then now it's going into the hole and that's it finished. So we've got this perfect pristine peg here. I'm very happy with the seating, the depth of the seating. It's exactly where I want it to be. And all I've got to do now is pair down the inside here. If you want square on this side, you can still square on this side. You just make your dowel a little bit shorter before you drive it and then do the square on both sides. This is the inside of a dining table and I don't need to do that. So that's how that looks when it's finished.